Alrighty, so here we are in Nuke um, with our two output it renders and our final result. So as you can see, this is what it will look like after you comp it and after you render it. So I hope this can kind of make sense of how I got this result. Um, so we're working with our two plates. So up here we have our rendered little Houdini thing. And over here we have our stars. So I'm gonna work through our star setup and then I'll work our way over to our galaxy kind of setup over here and we'll work downwards. So if we work over here, as you can see, I am using um, Houdini non-commercial and I don't recommend you do what I'm doing. I recommend you buy Houdini um, and also buy a nuke if you feel like it. Uh, but as you can see on every single output pass, you're gonna have that Houdini logo. So this is not recommended to do with Houdini Apprentice, but in this case, I am I have to remove the watermark, but. Usually when I do a sequence of images, I use my regular Houdini license. Um, I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there, so I'm not encouraging it. Um, so putting that aside, I did have to paint out the logo, and I did that with my Roto Paint. I'm not a comp artist, but I'm doing my best, so stick with me. Uh, we've got a grade node, so what I've done here is I've just comp this out and graded it up so it's a lot more bright than it was in the previous thing and if you're wondering how I'm going back and forth from my original plate to my grade node I've all just clicked a one have selected a node in nuke that I want to be on hit one and that will bring that up to my viewport and clicked another node and click two and I can jump in between those things so on the grade node this is what it looks like then added some glow so it's glowing up our stars. I haven't really added too much color there, but it just kind of up the brightness and the size. I've added some blur where I feel like it should be. So this roto is showing me is where the blur is located. So it's just a little tiny amount just so we can feather out the edges. If you want to add it back here, you probably could or in the center. I've then reformatted this to 1080p because I have a new Canon commercial and that's what you have to render it as. Um, but it's also to match it up with my other plate and down the pipe. Um, so over here, I've done something a little bit sneaky. I've added a lens distortion over here, so it's distorting our stars. And the cool thing about the lens distortion in Nuke is that you have a bunch of different options. Um, what I've done here is I've cho chosen spherical, so it's spherically distorting my plate. And then grid warped it randomly in different sources to make it, you know, twisted. So this is all randomized. This is not something that I strategically planned out. So it's all randomized. I've then transformed this to where I want it in my scene, which is somewhere else. And then I've merged it over here. So you can see that it's kind of warped. Uh, but jumping back up here, what I've done is I've added some noise on top of my stars to get it even brighter. So this noise here, it has a Z option of 4.76. So it's just very, very fine. Um, and the size is also a 13. I've transformed this to where I want it in my scene. So it's just pushed to the right just a little bit. You can see the transform over here. I've then refor reformatted this to match up with my stars. So over here, I've chosen a merge and divided this over on top. And you can see some finer details starting to come out with render where it looks kind of noisy. So if I turn this off, uh, if I bring my node here, you can see then when I hit the reformat, it looks very dull. And this is what it looks like with that merge on. So it's much brighter. So if we jump down here, we can see this is very warped. And I've done this, selected the areas where I want it to be warped and just put these things there. So that might look better. Going down to our grade, I've graded my areas and made things darker where I wanted them. So on this side in the back, I wanted this to be a little bit darker. So I rotoed that out and added, graded that down just a little bit. So this is what it looks like without the roto on. It's dark and it's amped up. So if we go over here to our grade over here, I've made some things look brighter, as you can see. And I've rotoed those areas where I want things to be brighter. So it's very messy roto, but it works. Don't be 
if a messy roto works, it works. Don't be too fine about it, but in this case, this is all for tutorial purposes. So then this is merged over top of our little node over here. And you may notice it's really bright, but I will get to that in a second. So this is what it should look like when it's merged on top of our little dust. So if we jump up to our little galaxy background of dark matter, we've once again painted out what we needed to paint out for in this tutorial purposes. I've added some edge blur, which is not very visible right now, but it works. Um, so what is just finally doing is we jump up to our roto paint. You can see that it looks a little bit different very fine it make does a very fine difference so jumping down to our glow it's going this up just a little bit and then reformatting this as well and then down here we have a merge and what this merge is doing is once again doing something similar to our little merge divide over here so it's just noise transformed reformatted so if we over go over here this noise is a little bit bigger this then transform to the right and then reformatted to fit our dark matter. I then added a grade node to make this even brighter because I felt like it. <laughs> and then I've added some blur just to blur this out. Jumping down here to our stars, you can see that suddenly it looks a little bit too bright, but don't worry about it. I needed it to be this bright for when I added the sparkles, which are coming next down here. So the sparkles are going to bring out selected stars. So if we jump down over here, you can see that they're placed. There's some that are placed a little bit differently. So if we turn I, these off, we can see one by one where they are in the scene. These are just added for some extra flair. They're not really needed too much, but you can see them down here. Um, and I've done something that people don't recommend you do with merge nodes, which is they have multiple A inputs. I did this because they're all the same. And if it was something different, then I normally would not add more than one A over B on a merge node. But that was just my, in my, in my case, what I did. So going down here, we have our volume rays which is adding a lot of brightness to our spheres. And I needed this to be extra bright, so this would have the desired effect. Um, but do as you will. And this is basically my settings for it. I had to remove one grade node. So this is what the setup looks like now. As you can see, I've blackened out this area because I want it to be a little bit more evident of what I'm doing. I've gone down to our hue correct. And I've grabbed only the luminance of our yellow. So what it is do is sampling that area. And then I just kind of moved it, this little luminance bar up and chose where I wanted it. I've then graded everything down minus this area here to give this area a little bit of glow and center our attention to our stars. Um, I've then reformatted this and added some more volume rays so we get that kind of sparkle right there. So you can see that setting there. And then I've transformed this just downward slightly because the next step is to add another lens distortion, which is gonna distort our galaxy like that. And what this is on is on a spherical uh, setting. And the way, the way you transform this is going to affect your lens distortion. So moving that up, you're going to see a different result. And then if you move it down. So that's what it should look like by the end of your setup. And that's pretty much it. And this is what we've created so far. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Kate, and I'll see you in the next video.